Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. One of my favorite songs from one of my favorite bands today. We're going to learn how to do Eyes of a Stranger uh, by Queensryche. So, Chris DeGarmo, Michael Walton, just an amazing guitar duo. Just did some incredible stuff. I think Chris DeGarmo is one of the greatest writers in, you know, rock history. Um, so, Check out all of this stuff if you have. I mean, I know when he left Queensryche, it was tough. So um, we're going to go throughout this entire thing and learn both Michael Wooten and uh, Chris Garmas parts. Now, I will say that when we get to the harmony sections of the song, I'm not going to be covering all the rhythm guitar stuff under it. So all the rhythm guitar stuff will be going on until there's a harmony line. And then I'm going to basically play each guitar, show you each guitar player's harmony line. Because I'm not assuming, okay, there's three guitar players in your band or whatever. You're probably not. So we'll stick with the essentials, like what they would play live. All right, but before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring that notification bell so you know when I release a video. And comment on videos and like them and all that stuff. You know, that really helps out the channel a lot. Um, and please, the best way to support what I do here on YouTube is to actually join my Guitar Academy which contains all of my guitar courses. Um, you'll see a link to it in the description below. Um, and that link will give you a free seven day trial. My Guitar Academy, all my guitar courses covering everything from complete beginner stuff to uh, more advanced courses in technique, improvisation, ear training and theory. And besides having access to all the, my courses and getting personal help from me, um, you really support what I do here on YouTube immensely. All right, because I can't do the YouTube without the Academy. All right, so I hope to see you guys there. So let's start here with this uh, clean intro, which I skipped in the beginning. Um, so pretty simple stuff. Here in this last quarter is actually a, a swell coming in with the kind of just shorted A power chord. So still, I don't forget that. That's, that's there. But anyway, let's start here with this little melody. So it's just a melody on the D string. Got second fret, four, five, four. Now while he's doing that, hit the low E string with it too. So you're gonna have to hybrid pick this. So you pick the low E string each time, and then with your let's say middle finger, just pick that note on the D string. So we have this. Two, you're always gonna hit the low E string with it. And then four, then up to five. Ominous sounding. Then back down to four. And then we start over. So back down to two. Up to four. Up to five. Now in this last time you hear when this A power chord swells in with the distortion, you're going to come up here and you're going to still hit the low E string in the bass, but you're going to play the seventh fret on the D string and the ninth fret there on the G. And so you're going to need two fingers to pluck like that. All right, so now we have the main riff where we come in with that swelling on the A on that last chord of the clean section, swell in an A power chord, and then we have this. And then the harmony line comes in. So we have this open E string. Now, actually, underneath this, if you want, you can add a rhythm guitar part under it. Uh, last, most of the time, I see them both playing this live, but um, you can do like the. So it's kind of that E, then the C, G, and then. power chords there, but uh, you can just kind of stick with this main riff if you want. So we have this open E, and then ninth fret on the D string. And then you want to think of it as three melody notes. And in between each one of those melody notes, you're going to keep going back to this ninth fret on the D. So we have the open E string, that ninth fret on the D. Now we go to the first melody note, 12th fret on the B. Then, like I said before, keep going back to this ninth fret on the D string between each note. 
Then go to the next melody note, the 10th fret on the B. Back to that 9 on the D. And then back to the 11, uh, to the melody note, uh, next time is on the 11th fret of the G string. And then back to that note, D. So we have this. And then we go down to this first chord. So that's going to be the uh, fifth fret across the D and the G, and then the eighth fret there on the uh, B string. So that's just a C power chord, inverted C power chord. And then you're going to make it a G power chord by just laying down now the seventh fret on the G string. So we have five on the D, seven on the G, eight on the B. So we have this. Then come up here and play this riff again. And then we go back to this C power chord. And now instead of adding the 7th fret and making it a, 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 a G power chord, you play that and then just move it up two frets. So we add this all together. Now, you can repeat that with those uh, chords I want if you have 15 guitar players in your band. But now we have a, um, a harmony guitar line for both Chris DeGarmo and Mike Walton. Now, Chris DeGarmo plays the lower harmony line, so you do that one first. We have this. All right, so we're going to start here at the uh, ninth fret on the G, then up to 11, and then a half step bend and release down to five on the G. So we have this 11, bend and release, five on the G string, and then do a bend and release at the uh, whole step bend and release at the seventh fret on the G. So we have this. And then you can so you start the melody over, really. But he, I, when I see him play, sometimes he'll kind of go up the G string just to play those notes. But it's kind of maybe better to go over to the B string and play them there because we're going to prepare for that run that's coming up. So. When you're starting the melody over, instead of going, we just go nine and then seven, eight on the B, because I guess it's in position for this little run. Now this little run is just a sequence. They do this um, throughout the song. They'll do this in the solo section as well too. Um, what they're doing is um, just a three-note sequence through the scale. So what that basically means is you have your scale, the notes of the scale. So in this case, let me just show you the notes real quick. We have 10, 8, 7 on the B. Then 9, 7, 6 on the, on the G. And then that's 9, 7, 5 on the D. So those are the notes. Now, how he plays across these notes is he takes a sequence to it. So we, we have a three-note sequence starting off of every note, and we just keep going down. So what does that mean? Well, we start on this top note and go three notes down from it. One, two, three. Then you start on the next note in the scale down, which is now the, the eighth fret. So you go three notes down from that one. Then you start the next note in the scale, which is that seventh fret on the B, and do three notes down from that, just staying within the scale. So it's a three note descending sequence that he just takes down and plays off of every note in the scale until he wants to stop. Two, three, the next note. One, two, three, the next note. One, two, three. And then we have one, two, three from the ninth fret on the uh, G. Now that note is what's going to stick out a little bit. And then we have seven, six on the uh, G. 
over to that uh, 9 on the D, then 3 notes down from the 6th fret, and then 3 notes down from the 9th fret there on the D. So as long as you know these notes, and you know the pattern, it's easy to memorize it. Now he's pulling off these notes more, he's not picking them, so he's like... So one of those I did a slide just when we changed position. Like that. So you can do that. So it's just pulling off 10, 8, 7, then pulling off these two notes, and you have to pick that note. And then pick 7, then pull off 9, 7. And then play pick 9, pull off the 7, slide down to 6. That's how I'm doing it at least. So as soon as we get to those three notes on the D string, they hit the low E and you're done. So we have this. So. All right. Now, so we have Michael Wilton's harmony line, which is just harmonizing this in a third up. So we have this. So that's starting at the 8th fret on the B, up to 10, hold that bend and release, down to 5, so, and then uh, bend and release at the 8th fret on the B. So, then we start the melody over again, but once again we can play a little bit differently. Eight, 10 over to 7 on the high E string and now we start his triplet line which goes to the same scale but since he's a third higher a little bit higher up in this hill so we're gonna the notes are gonna be that 8 7 on the high E and he's gonna make then the same scale on the B string same scale on the G and just the first note on the D there since he's starting three notes higher so we're just doing add that 7 8 on top of the scale so we're gonna start the three note sequence from there Three notes down from the eight, then three notes down from the seven, then three notes down from the ten on the B. So I'm not showing you the notes too much because we already covered what they are. And then three notes down from the eight, then three notes down from the seven. And here he tends to stay on the G string actually, from what I can see. He plays nine, six, pull off, I mean, sorry, slide down to uh, six, and then play seven, six, slide down to four, instead of playing that same note there. So we have this, and then the low E there too. So we have this. All right, so that's it for the intro section. And then we have this first verse is this. So we, we start here with this, this fourth fret on the D, second fret on the G, open B, open high E string. So that's the first chord. And then we're going to have the open E string. And we're going to go down to an E major chord here, which is just going to be the um, second fret on the D, first on the G, open B, open high E again. So we have this. From there, you kind of just, kind of a little muted hit. You could just hit it on the, the second fret on the D string or just a muted, muted note. And then we have this. 
which is the you keep the first fret there on the uh, G string, but you're gonna hammer on zero. To, you're gonna hit that along with the open B, and hammer on the second fret there on the B string. So it is. And then we go back to the first chord, low E, and then the E major again. And now this second inning, which is basically just a different hammer. We're going to be holding, instead of doing this, we're going to play this, a bar across the second fret on the G and the B. You play those together, and then hammer on the third fret there on the B. So we have this. And then just repeat. And then after you've done it a couple times, we have this little transition. Just strum the chord and then go the high E, B, and G, and then go down to the E major. And so that's that. The, you strum the chord and then pick the D string and then the, then the high E, B, G, and D. So it is. And then start over from where we began. Now this last one, the last time, instead of going to this E major down here, you do this. Well, at least you see Krista Garmer jumps up and grabs this for him, which is the open E string, seventh fret on the A, six on the D, seven on, I mean, sorry, nine on the G. And then that gets us to the pre-chorus slash chorus. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of, uh, they kind of blend together. So I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna kind of play through the pre-chorus and chorus sections and teach them together. So we have this. <laughs> That's a different part. So um, anyway, so this this pre-chorus is a little bit different than the main riff that came that kind of a little bit different from that one. We start with the same E string, but the first you don't play that at first. We have so just basically you skip the first hit of the nine on the D string. You just hit, go for straight from the low E string to the twelfth fret on the B string. So this is just the pre-chorus. Then you go to the nine. And then the 10 on the B, 9 on the D again, and then the 11 on the G. So again, it's just one little no difference. Instead of this, it is this. So it's a slight difference. And then we go to the same chord. Then here, take this C up to the D, and then you can hear resolves it. You'll hear this better at the end of the song. That, that D and then resolve, just pick up the note on the B string, so it's just a bar across the 7th fret, across the D, G, and the B. And then we're to the actual kind of chorus here, which is a... Anyway, so that starts on the C chord. So this is, um, play just the regular C power chord, and then you move that note up on the uh, G string from fifth fret up to the seventh. 
And then while you're doing that, after that, you go to the, you're gonna now play, move the note on the D string down to the fourth fret. So we have this. Like that, so it. Then we have this, this little melody line. Five, four on the D to five on the A. So from there we hit the low E string and then play the power chord of the fifth fret, the D power chord of the fifth fret of the A string. Slide up to seven and back down to five. So it is. Then down, that's good. Do have some little muted hits in there. Then the E power chord. Then jump up here and go. The fifth fret on the A, fourth fret on the D, and then make a power chord by just laying then the pinky down to the fifth fret while keeping that fifth fret on the A string. It's the seventh fret, laying the pinky down on the seventh fret of the D. So, and then a couple hits again on the low E, back down to the C power chord. So let me play up to that. And then we kind of start the same thing over a little bit with the C chord. So that's a little bit different ending we did. After we have that, we go up to the D power chord, and then up to the E power chord. And then kind of you do it, kind of a hit there, down up hit, muted hit, and gonna go back to the E power chord. But this time you're gonna, while you're doing it, you're gonna hammer on. The seven to nine on the D. So up to that part, we have this. Then down to an E power chord after the little hand roll. And then we have couple hits again. I keep adding those hits, um, but we have this time, again, fifth fret on the A, fourth fret on the D, but you're going to pick those together, hammer on the fifth fret on the D, and then a couple hits and back to that C power chord. Uh, so we have this all together. It's better sometimes to play because it, it is kind of intricate. So So it kind of starts over here. So just like the first time we played there. And now this time when it gets to the C power chord, it's kind of like the second inning. Instead of going. What it does, it starts building up there. And it goes, it takes us to the second verse, which is completely different than the first verse, and it, it completely rocks too, so I'm glad I did it. Um, so that's just kind of. So, kind of, you're basically at the very end of the second time through that chorus riff, instead of going. It goes. Takes us here. All right, so hopefully you guys understand the chorus. It's better, I know, sometimes to play along when it comes to just riffs like that. Uh, but it's basically the same thing done twice. Um, so now we have verse number two. There's a little bit of a, like a, a little uh, transition into it. It's because it's coming out when we hit that chorus. So from when we first hit this chorus, let's hit this.
get carried away, man. I think this is a, this song is just killer. All right, so we're starting here with this kind of a big E power chord, low E string open, second fret bar on the A and D, second fret on the A and D. I really want to bar these three strings there because you're gonna first be playing the B on the G string, and so you have those four strings. And again, Use some muted hits again, and what you're gonna do is pick the D string, which you're holding at the second, the second fret, and the G, which you're holding at the second now, and hammer back on that fourth fret. So it is. Then a back, some more low E hits. Then basically move that fourth fret up to the fifth fret on the uh, um, G string while keeping the second fret there on the on the D. So we have this. And then a couple more hits, and then we go to a D chord, D triad with inverse inversion, which is the F sharp there on the D string, fourth fret, uh, second fret on the A, uh, a note, it's on the G string, and then the uh, third fret there on the B. So we have this. And then a couple more, so he's gonna keep adding those low E hits in there, so what? Now here's where the vocals come in. So we go back to this first chord. So it's the same thing there. But here, what we trans, we have this first time, hammer on that two to four, low E hits, then up to that chord we did before, and then low E hits, but this time you're just gonna play the fourth fret on the G, I'm sorry, the D, second fret on the G. So just those two notes. There and then back to the main chord. Back to the hammer from two to two to four on the G. And then here we go to the full D chord, which is four on the D string, second on the G, third on the B. And then you're gonna end it really by sliding four to five on the D and four to five on the G. So all together from when the vocals come in on this part. Now you repeat from there. Now this very last time, instead of doing two to four the last time, he actually goes, Pick the two on the D and four on the G, slide it up, that up to the uh, fifth fret of the G string. So it's very slight, but if you listen to the original recording, you can hear it. Back to that D major chord, and then the same ending as before. So all together from when we, we came out of this um, chorus, Vocals come in. Right here, slide from B to C. And then the same enemy. All right, so that's the verse, I just call it verse two. Um, and then we have the pre-chorus and chorus, just a little bit different ending from when we played it before. Actually, it's it's really, we're, well, we're not doing, which is like the true pre-chorus. We just kind of go straight into the chorus. Right here. So there's just a little different ending from that C, A 
do that up to the D and then the little add nine or whatever. And then down to the A power chord. And then at the very end, there's a B power chord, the second fret of the A string. And then that takes us to the solo section. So the solo section, what I'm going to play here is this, the rhythm guitar part for the solo section. Um, and then basically come in where, so Michael Walton's playing underneath Chris Garma's solo. But when it gets to the harmony section, then I'm going to go pick up and play Michael Walton's harmony part. So that's how we're going to do it here. So you're going to hear rhythm first, and then kind of halfway through, I'm going to jump into the harmony line. Um, and then we'll go back and do all of Krista Garmo's solo and then his part of the harmony line. So we have this right here. Alright, so we're just starting there with this, this E hit while Krista Garmer does that little part where Krista Garmer does. So this is kind of all the E power for that. And then we jump into the jump into E to the D power chord with the fifth fret of the A string. So you just kind of go back and forth two times with that. And then just at the end we have this. Which is just kind of the C. So we have C power chord to the G, and then he kind of does a little bass line, which just goes from the G power chord to two on the low E, open E, open A power chord. And then he jumps into the harmony. So that's gonna start, it's kind of similar to the uh, his part of the opening, the harmony intro and the intro section of the song. So we have this, we start here, 10, I mean, sorry, eight on the B, 10, that bend and release, down to five, same thing as before, that bend and release of the eight. And then from here, eight, eight to 10 on the B, to seven on the high E. And then you go up to eight, and then play, this is the high harmony part, by the way, which is, Play eight, 10 now. So there, and we up to 10, pull off to eight, pull off to seven, back to the eight. So that little ending there's. Then he jumps way up here. So we have, we're up here at the 19th fret. Pick that 19th fret a few times. So, then down to 17, pull off to 15, over to 19 on the B, then do that again. 17, pull off to 19. I'm uh, sorry, 17, pull off to 15, over to 19 on the B. So we just. So. Then back to that uh, 15 on the high E string. Then. We're going to start the melody from there. So we have. So, so 15, 17, the bend and release. Then over to 17 on the B string. Then we're going to play the uh, bend and release at the 20th fret on the B string. So we have this. Then from there, pick the 20 again on the B, then go up 17 on the high E, and then 19, and now we start the triplet pattern again. This is through those notes. So he's playing 20, 19, 17 on the high E, and the B. 
Then the notes he's gonna do on the G string, he's gonna kind of keep everything down the G from there. So we have this 19, 18, 16, and then 14. So that C sharp's in there again. So just three notes down from each note. The same pattern that we did before, and he's doing mostly pulling off and slides. So we have this. So just kind of, just remember that pattern, three notes down from each note in the scale, and you know the notes in the scale, and then you can just do it. And you just try, you just pick the notes that you have to. So. So just know those notes and follow the pattern, and it's pretty easy. And he ends it there, and hops to the uh, bridge section. So, Chris DeGarmo is now solo and then into his harmony part. So I'm going to play that for you real quick, and then I'll show you how to play it note for note. All right, so I might have, when I was in that melody there at the very end, <laughs> I remembered one melody note in the, the uh, Michael Wilton's thing. So when we, we do that, when we're going up there, like, the, at the end, we, so before, when, it would, when you're doing this little melody right here, it, it kind of goes back then on the scale. So back to Michael Wilton's part in that harmony section in the solo, when, at that very end, Instead of going from there into the triplets, it goes back down to 17 real quick and then to the triplets. Sorry about that. When you're dealing with 3,000 notes at once, you're going to inevitably miss one from here or there. So anyway, so Michael Will, uh, I mean, sorry, Krista Garma solo, we have this first phrase. All right, so we're gonna start with this kind of some. Uh, actually, we're gonna start with this little phrase here, and then the proper solo starts. So that little line right there is you're gonna be uh, pedaling off of the open E string each time. So basically, pick the note, the melody notes on the uh, B string, and you hit that high E string between each one. So you pick the 12 on the B, then the high E string, open, then seven on the B. Then the high E open, eight on the B, high E open, five on the B, high E open, seven on the B. So, so far we have this. So the melody note is just 12, seven, eight, five, seven, and then down three, one, zero on the B. So the melody is just all on the B string with that put in the high E string between each one. And then we get to that first solo, which is... Very, very cool. So we had this couple hits on the low E. You got a hammer five to seven on the A string. Hits on the low E again, a couple of them. Then pull off seven to five. And a couple of low E hits again, so it is. Couple of low E hits. And then slide seven to nine down the A. So we have this. those low E hits, and then we have this pulling off 5 to 4 on the D, over to 5 on the A, and 
then slide back to the seven on the A. And then slide into that seven again. And then do a quick hammer from five to seven, pull back off the five. So, so far we have this. And then the end of the melody. So we, we're sliding into nine on the D, then down to seven, and then play hammer seven, nine, pull off to seven, slide down to four. All right, next phrase. into the harmony section. So we're going to do this. We're going to um, slide into the ninth fret on the D, roll over to the ninth on the G, and back to the uh, ninth on the D. And then hammer seven and nine on the G. Then over to eight, seven, eight, seven on the B. Over to uh, nine on the G. Then a bend at the eighth fret on the B. Release that bend. And then you do a quick little hammer from seven to eight, pull back off the seven, and then down to the kind of slide down into the fifth fret on the G string. So look at this. Sorry, one more time. Then start that again. So right here, after you get to that nine on the G string the second time, he slides that up to this lick. So that's sliding into the 14th fret on the G, over to 15, I'm oh, sorry, 12 on the B string. You're gonna pull off now 15 to 12, over to 15 on the G, and back to the 12 on the, on the B string. Then repeat that 15 on the G, and then the 12 on the B again. So Then you're gonna pull off 15 to 14 to 12 on the G. And then you're gonna play, pull off 14 to 12 on the G, over to 14 on the D. And then kind of do that again. So we have. So after that four, second time, you're gonna play 12, you can pull off if you want, 12 to 11, over to 14 on the D, and then back to that 11 is what ends the lick on the G. Then we go to his harmony line now. So this now this is when Michael Wilton comes in. So from here he goes down to starts kind of the same harmony line, uh, and then they go off higher. So it's kind of the same harmony line from the beginning of the song. Alright, so it starts with the same line as before. And now there's a different ending to it. 9 on the G, up to 11, up to 8 on the B string. And then we have this. So this is a low harmony part. 10, pull off 10, 12 to 10 to 8, and then back to 10.
All right, and then we're up here to the, really, the lower harmony part of the high section. <laughs> that makes any sense. Yeah. So we're up here, hit that 15 a couple times. So this is the, goes to that part. So that's a couple times on the 15. You're gonna pull off 14 to 12 on the high E, over to 15 on the B, and then repeat that 14 to 12, pull off, down to 15 on the B, and then back to the uh, 12th fret on the high E. And then into the melody, 12, 14, half step, bend, release, over to 13 on the B. Pulse that bend and release at the 15th fret. And then back to that 12, 14, 15, and then back to that 14 note, which goes with this. And then we start his descending line. So just the notes that we're playing here real quick. So remember, it's just that same descending line, three note, down three notes from each note. Which is just, the, the, so the notes are 17, 15, 14 on the high E and the B. And then 16, 14, 12, 11 on the G. So just three notes down from that top note. So those notes on the G, I'm just pulling off, sliding down, then pulling off, sliding down. So it's the same pattern. I'm just showed you the notes first, and then take that same pattern and apply it to those notes. And that's how you'll understand what they're doing there. And then we get to the bridge section, which looks like this. So that starts with a, a B power chord here at the second fret of the A string. And then you just play four on the G, two on the G, O to four on the D. That's a little melody line that happens in it. Then move it up to the C power chord. Then you take it down to an A sus two chord. So you just play it first as just, just the A power chord kind of. But you want that B string to be open. Back down to that G string. Like this. And then back to the same thing, uh, the B, that melody note. And then up to the C. And then we have a different ending here. Instead of an A sus 2 chord, we do this. So, so that just that G power chord, and then 2 on the low E, 5 on the A. Open E, and then to that A sus two chord, and kind of pick across that. So we have this. Went there, and then we just go to a G power chord, and then that kind of D power chord, but F sharp in the bass. So, to the A power chord, and then hit that again. The low E hit it again, and then the G power chord. Or just gonna play it like that. So all together with it. get to the chorus again. So the chorus kind of holds that first note. And then picks up from there.
right here. So it's kind of the same little ending there. When he gets to that part, uh, we get back to that. Now it's kind of the same as the intro there. But here, we do it kind of like we did in the middle of the song where we now add that D chord at the, at the end and then... Now, um, that's over the kind of little outro section that's going. We also have some chords going. The E power chord, the same that kind of had in the solo. I'm, not, no, I'm sorry, not solo, but kind of earlier on when we did this, to, the, to that C to G, E, C. That's one underneath it. All right. So while that's going on, you can choose which rhythm part you want to play because now Krista Garma comes in with some uh, little outro solo stuff. Uh, we'll start, looks like this. All right. It kind of fades out from there. So we just have this got octave shape. Um, we have the fifth fret on the A string, the seventh fret on the, on the G. Remember, he's going to hit those kind of two low E string hits, of course, all between this. So I'm hitting that D octave, slotting up to the E octave, so two frets higher. So you do that a few times, like four times, and then what you're going to do is hit then the E power chord, and then slide it down to the D. So, low E string open and then we just have some some uh, power chords here off the G and B string so we have this um, fifth fret here on the uh, G string eight on the B the C power chord then down to the fourth fret five seven five seven so B So it kind of just goes off from there, just kind of fades out there. So I know it's kind of an intricate breakdown of this really kind of epic track from Queen's Rike. It's just, it's just an incredible song. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.